A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, welcome back to the Arun Sharma Mindworks channel. And good news from my side. Uh, in fact, you must have noticed this: forty thousand subscribers, one million views. Amazing milestone for all of us, and invigorates us to actually realize that this is the first step in a hundred in a in a journey which is a hundred steps or a thousand steps long at least for us, and uh, and uh, brings us a lot of energy to actually do more for all of you. For for our community and for our channel, and uh, in that uh, context, uh, this video is about the frequency analysis for that. And those of you who have for IFT, sorry, and those of you who have not uh, subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe. Please start sharing the videos. We got over four thousand shares in two thousand twenty, and we would love to uh, add at least a zero to that in the next one year. Because as most of you know, I have I've actually started getting active on YouTube only. Uh, over the last 15 days, in in that sense, that I'm I'm going all in on YouTube here. So coming back, uh, this is this is the IFT frequency analysis for all of you. So I'm just going to share my screen uh, for all of you to see. And uh, a lot of you had actually requested me to to discuss uh, the frequency analysis for the IFT, and we'll also talk about three keys to crack the IFT. Very similar to the ZAT video. Those of you who have not seen. The ZAD video you can head over uh, uh, to the to the ZAD video. We'll be providing the link in the, at the end of this video for that. So let's come back to what we are talking about. So first of all, the frequency analysis of the verbal section. Let's let's have a look at what the verbal section has been throwing away when we talk about IAFT. So uh, so first of all, look, let's look at the number of questions overall. So 35. This is 2020 onwards. 2020 and going back. To 2011, so 35, 36. So you can you can see basically the number of questions between 35 to 40, always, and out of that, around 40, 45 percent is under reading comprehension. So 40 percent of it plus is the reading comprehension. 40 percent of the verbal section is reading comprehension, and then you have a mix of all kinds of. Verbal questions. So this is the verbal questions, and you can see starting with analogies, paragembles, grammar, vocabulary. So some of the things things you have done in CAD, but 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 of course one thing which is very visible is that the word level of the language, the word and the sentence level of the language is very critical in IFT. So so fill in the blanks, idioms, the vocabulary questions are very very heavy on vocabulary, very difficult. Uh, not not the free high frequency words, so you should be focusing definitely on vocabulary, and you can see that vocabulary has been a constant presence right through. So that's one major theme of the IFT exam. Vocabulary has been a constant presence right through. If you look at the last ten years, whether you look at 2019, nine questions out of 36. 2020, of course, the numbers was less, it's just four questions out of 35. Uh, but but uh, in the in the heavy vocabulary years, you can see 25 percent of the paper on vocabulary of the VA section, and in in the light years, it is around 10 to 12 percent of the paper. So vocabulary is something a high quality vocabulary, especially uh, medium frequency and low frequency words, is something you should definitely do. And of course, fill in the blanks is also some in some way or the other vocab dependent as it, as is analogies. So so you can see a very very heavy concentration. On the word-based, uh, word-level questions in in the uh, VRC part. Uh, when coming to RC, the RCs will be slightly easier than CAT, slightly more scoring. But uh, other, I mean, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll be like on the lower end of the CAT uh, difficulty spectrum. So you will, you will, you will typically find reading comprehensions to be easier to score. Uh, but the, but the reading feel will be will be more or less around the easier passages of the CAT, right? Not the tougher ones. Etc. So this is the uh, the verbal uh, uh, frequency analysis. Take a good look at this. You can you can pause the video and look at it from 2010 to 2020. We did a lot of work to bring this video for you. Uh, actually, uh, segregating the number of questions in each area. So coming to the con section, uh, the current IFT exam this year. I mean, IFT makes you your number of questions they don't define, just like CAT. But uh, uh, this year you you can. I mean, last year there were 110 questions. Which uh, comprised of 35 questions in in uh, in uh, verbal uh, and uh, 
25 questions in quants and 30 questions in uh, reasoning and data interpretation. So, so currently the IFT is a four section exam. It's a four section exam where the sections essentially are verbal and RC, which is, as I said, as I already told you, the verbal is slightly different from what CAT verbal is, but the RC is similar on the easier side, slightly, slightly more scoring side. Uh, QA is again very similar field to CAT, except the fact that some questions in QA will be very simple. Some, some, some sitters, you can expect a, a little bit more sitters in the QA section in IFT than, than you find in CAT. Uh, and, and, and the QA section, of course, uh, last year was 25 questions, but you can see the, the mix between 20 to 25 questions is what QA is, uh, except for 2010 when there were 30 questions. So, so 35 questions in verbal, 25 questions in QA, 30 questions in LR and DI. This was last year's pattern. Now let's, before I go, go to LRDI, let's uh, focus on the, on the uh, topic uh, list for uh, the verbal, the topic uh, uh, structure for the verbal or the topic, topic frequency in the verbal. So if you, if you see through this, you will see that arithmetic, Last year was 50% of the paper, but even in other years, you can see around 20, 25% as a mix, as a standard mix, except 2017, which was a off year uh, in terms of how much arithmetic was asked. But apart from that, you will see it's, it's close to 50% and very often 35 to 40% of the paper, which is arithmetic. So arithmetic is definitely a important area. You must have studied arithmetic well for CAT. So you just, Make sure that you review, re revise that. LOD 1 and 2 both is required for this, difficulty level wise. Algebra, the same chapters in CAD that you did in algebra, functions, inequalities, logs, equations. And again, you can see that there are certain years where algebra is pretty heavy. Certain years where algebra is pretty heavy, 33%. And uh, other years where it is down to 10%, 15%. So that's algebra. Number system, the number system you can see is an absence here and a very small presence in these. So, so it's not, I mean, this is, and, and this is a pattern which is, which has been replicated by the CAT also. If you can see earlier, number systems was much more critical uh, in IFT as, as it was in CAT, but that criticality actually moved to, to algebra and arithmetic in both CAT and IFT, so to say. And geometry retains its preeminence. So 20, 25% of your, of your questions are uh, from geometry uh, on a regular basis. So, so that's an area you want to study. And modern maths, which is permutation, combination, probability, and sets. So that also you can see some years where this was a very important part. So imagine leaving out modern maths and hence that strategy does not work. Imagine people going to the 2013 exam and leaving out the modern maths chapters. So since it's just two, three chapters, permutation, combination, probability, and set theory, you should, you should ideally do this well, specifically since IFT, you have got enough time this year. So, so yeah, modern maths pay, don't, this thing, worst case, it'll give you a 10% dividend. Worst case, it'll give you a 10% dividend in the exam. And in, in, a, in a year when, where it is dominant or it, it, uh, they actually go overboard on uh, the number of questions. You can see it's close to 25 to 30 percent. Even this is the highest, I guess. 32 percent of the paper in 2013 was on modern maths. So do not leave modern maths as the other uh, 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 message that comes from the frequency analysis table. Focus on arithmetic. Focus on algebra. Focus on geometry. And focus on your permutation, combination, probability, and set theory. These four, uh, these four areas, number systems, you can just maintain uh, what you were at in CAT. And there's only one year which would have uh, uh, bucked the trend in number system where you had 25% of the questions on number systems. Uh, so, so I'm not saying that you leave number systems, but, but uh, if you have a choice between working number systems or working modern maths, in IFT, this, this frequency analysis clearly tells you what to do, right? I don't need to tell you that. So that's... Uh, as far as uh, as uh, quants goes, and uh, 
let's look at the dinlr now dinlr mein ek important point hua hai which you should understand before you look at this chart and that that point is that uh, earlier uh, before 2019 including 2019 the the uh, paper used to be a uh, day i mean there used to be two separate sections one section for di and another for lr so you can have a look at this this slide it's showing you that so so you can see that typically the di would be around 20 questions or 18 questions or 20 questions and the lr would be 20 questions 20 questions 22 questions so so this is one part of this now most of the di that you will see so but but in 2020 it became one section 30 questions and of course uh, 2020 the other change that they did was till 2019 the marks were uh, into one every every question had one mark in 2020 they they changed it to three marks per question but that that is just a scaling up down to magar one mark per page doge so it does not make a difference to your solving of the paper whether i make three marks per question or i make five marks per question if the number of questions remain same and there is no differential marking which there is not at least in these three sections quants dilr and verbal the marking is same so in that does not make a difference whether you you are appearing for a question for a paper in which every every question is one mark or every question is three marks as i said this is just a scaling up or down down issue so agar main one into one hi do tum logo ko marks aur last mein into three kar do to ek hi baat ho gaya it does not make a difference so so you should not bother too much about that into three part but but what you need to understand is that this part is mostly traditional di this part is mostly traditional di so so it will be about about understanding the data about uh, extracting the data about about putting the the correct information from the table or the bar graph or the line graph or the pie chart into a formula i mean what do you do in a traditional di question you extract you the question will ask you to to give you some to give them some some knowledge or some information from the data so for that information you have to form, find a formula suppose they say what what is uh, this as a percentage of that do you have a formula which is this upon that you you create a formula which says this upon that and once you create the formula then you have to extract those numbers from the chart and put it here and then do the calculation that's what uh, that's what a, a traditional di question is and like logical di that requires a lot of processing before you get to the answer yahan pe it is just a read of the table but but one thing i should i should mention here is that this will be heavy on calculations and you don't have a calculator there so you need to work out one of the things you need to work out is how do you dominate your calculations and i know uh, i have promised you a course on calculations uh, either on the arun sharma mindworks channel or the arun sharma academy channel ri that's coming up most probably by next week i should have that so i'm just reminding you if those of you who have not subscribed and press the bell icon please do that now just let's just before we move on and before we wind up this session let's just move on into the uh, into an analysis of the reasoning section so if you if you uh, uh, if you see here this was 17 questions last year 17 questions on di uh, in around five sets and you had 30 questions or 13 questions on lr right so i think there's there's some some uh, error in this in this counting so maybe i think uh, i don't want to speculate but but broadly maybe minus 1 somewhere al along this this ch uh, chain because this is adding up to 14 but anyway this is 13 questions in lr last year and 17 questions in di so yes 13 questions in lr karoge i think it was 16 questions in di maybe this was 6 the di was 16 questions if i remember correctly So 16 questions in DI and 14 questions in LR. That was the that was the basic uh, structure of last year's paper. Uh, and these 14 questions in LR, if you see through the years, uh, blood relation and data arrangement. These are basically puzzles, linear arrangement puzzles again. Set theory again a constant presence you can see. But but the puzzles are the most important part of of uh, of of the LR section. so in a year like 2016 if you look at it 38 questions in di plus lr out of which 18 questions are in di 
So there are 20 questions on LR, and out of those 20 questions, these 10 questions are blood relation and data arrangement, which is basically uh, data arrangement basically means puzzles. So puzzles are very important, and puzzles and linear arrangement and set theory, these three kinds of questions you have done quite a bit for CAT. So you just need to make sure that you uh, you you review that and and maybe practice it a little bit more because sometimes these questions I've seen some puzzle questions of X, of IFT are really twisted and tough. So so you need to uh, make sure that in case you get into a fight with that with those questions you need to be able to get through. And then you 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 can you can see some missing number that means uh, sequence series kind of question, some direction questions. Sometimes you'll get a machine input output or a coding decoding question, and of course, uh, the verbal based or data space efficiency or any special type of questions. Just just go through the 2010 to 2020 IFT papers before you go in. That's part of your critical strategies for preparing for IFT. You have to see all the papers of the last 10 years, uh, last, last 10 or 11 years, and they're all available off the net. Uh, I think we are also trying to put them up on mind on the mindwork site. They'll come up soon there also. So so this is the basic breakdown of uh, uh, of the uh, three sections, and then the fourth section, which is there, which is currently there uh, in uh, uh, in uh, the IFT exam, is the GK section, and GK is critical because. Uh, it's it's uh, it's counted unlike that where it is not counted so so gk becomes critical last year there were 20 questions in gk with a total of 30 marks so ek to differential marking hai pe. and the part of his strategy will also be ki kis section mein kitna time dena hai. so gk was 20 questions 1.5 marks per question and gk you know does not actually take time. It is it is more about uh, about reading uh, the question, knowing the answer, or you not don't know the answer. There's not much thinking that you have to do in GK. So so critical things that you uh, build for your GK is heads of important organizations, books and authors. In ke list ko parlo, longest, largest, highest, tallest, tallest uh, mountain peak, longest river, right? Those those kind of questions, right? Important logos of companies and organizations important people country currencies and capitals brands and companies all these uh, which brand belongs to which company international organizations headquarters and year of formation scientific terms and common terms common names uh, for for various uh, things then stock up exchange names and and locations then india's national uh, insignia in india's national science like India's national bird, national sport, whatever, uh, whatever national uh, this thing is awarded in Indian context, then then this is actually gets diverse then. So Indian history and global literature, this is huge. People study history for five years before they can say that they know Indian history. So maybe you'll not do much work on this. You'll just review and revise what you know. Maybe a short visit to the NCRT, 11th and 12th will help you. Because that's where uh, UPSC aspirants uh, start preparing for their uh, uh, for the GK. So short short visit to 11th, 12th NCRT for history and geography might might help you quite a bit. Then the Constitution of India, economic terms, and the recent developments of everything and important events of the last six months. So this is your uh, scope for for GK. And I'll bring up bring in a separate video because this video has already uh, uh, exceeded the time that I wanted to make it for. So I'll bring a separate video for the strategy or the or the keys to cracking it. Right. So we'll do a separate video for the keys. So this was just a frequency analysis video in the end. So so I hope uh, this helps you onward in your IFT preparation. And please do like, subscribe, share the videos. Uh, and the more you share, the more I get invigorated to actually do more for you. Thank you so much and do do share the channel do do get your friends etc to subscribe uh, so that we can grow with leaps and bounds over the next uh, few months together thank you so much bye 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 everyone